Ayan, so I'm assuming na kaya kayo nag-click ng video kasi gusto nyo malaman paano ba kayo makakakuha ng visa to Europe. Schengen visa. That's uh, what they call it. Noong una, kala ko Schengen, pero narinig ko Schengen. So, okay, Schengen visa. Alright, so, kailangan nyo muna malaman anong country ba kayo sa Europe pinakamatagal magsistay. So, yung iba, magsistay sila na matagal sa France, pwede kayo magsistay na matagal sa Italy. So, depende kung saan yon kayo pinakamatagal magsistay, then dun din kayo kukuha ng visa nyo. Pwede rin naman kung pare-pareho sila ng um, duration of stay, pwede naman dun sa port of entry nyo. Kung papasok kayo sa Netherlands, sa Netherlands kayo kukuha ng visa. So, as simple as that. So, in uh, my case naman, um, Batagal kami magsistay sa France, so pumunta kami sa French Embassy. And alamin nyo, syempre, yung mga countries na medyo mataas yung rejection rate. So, medyo iwasan nyo yun. So, hindi namin alam before nag-apply kami. Tapos, um, sa France, pinakamataas pala yung rejection rate doon. Or, or isa siya sa top 5 na highest rejection rate. So, nag-take lang talaga kami ng risk. And since napaka-confident ng husband ko, feel niya talaga ma-approve kami. He got ready with all the documents, nag-book na siya ng flight, nag-book na siya ng um, hotel, which increase our chances of getting approved. Pero para sa inyo, kung wala pa kayong nabubook na anything, I wrote it all down. So number one, I really recommend that you go to a trusted agency. Kasi minsan, feel nyo, nagtitipid kayo or kaya na siya gawin lahat. For me kasi, kung first time nyo, ayoko mag-risk. Kasi yung agency, marami na silang alam. Sanay na sila sa mga nare-reject, sanay na sila sa mga alam mo yung mga kulang-kulang na documents, alam nila lahat yan. So, okay. Or, pwede rin naman kasi kayong uh, mag-apply ng premium service sa VFS Global. Sa VFS Global, mm -hmm. nandun yung um, embassy, British Embassy, andun yung French Embassy. So, sila, meron silang tinatawag na premium service na nung first time ko pumunta sa Europe, in namin yon. Ang ginagawa lang naman nila is sila mismo yung nagsiscreen ng documents mo before the actual um, application. Pero that's on the same day. So, medyo risky rin siya kasi nandun ka na eh. Paano kung kulang-kulang yung documents mo, tapos nandun ka na, you applied for um, a premium service. Hindi rin naman ganun guaranteed na makakuha ka ng visa porket in-apply mo yung premium service nila. I think you have to add like 2-5 to get that premium service. Nilalagay nila kayo sa lounge, pero yung lounge is actually just mga upuan. Parang dining area lang siya na konti. And then, doon nila i-check yung mga documents siya. Tapos bibigyan nila kayo ng snacks. So, pinigyan nila kami donut and pineapple juice for that. And then, um, they take your photo as well sa premium service. Pero nasa sa inyo yun. Pero for me, mas practical sa akin na mag-agency ka na lang kaysa mag-premium service ka. Kasi yung agency, mangulit sila about your documents. Okay? So, yun yung number one tip ko. Go to a trusted travel agency. And of course, syempre, fill out the form from VFS Global. Yung agency nyo naman, kung pupunta kayo doon, syempre, they're gonna uh, provide you with the documents that you need to fill out. And for me, importante talaga, well, requirement talaga nila na gumaki ng cover letter. Intention nyo na mag-travel. And dito nyo sasabihin kung saan yung mga balak pumunta. Not really, um, it's not really an itinerary, pero parang, Like for me, I wanted to go to see the Eiffel Tower. I wanted to see Arc de Triomphe. Example lang naman yon. Parang they want you to give them details on your plans sa travel mo. Parang to make it easier for them. Para mas makonvince mo sila na gusto ko lang talaga magtravel. I mean, di ako sa stage and I'm not gonna overstay or what. I just want to see these sights and all. So madali naman sila ka usap most of the time. All right. And also write yung sa cover letter yon. Kung um, kailan nyo balak bumalik and bakit pa kayo babalik sa Pilipinas? I mean, what do you have going on here? So, in my case, eto, yung mga iba kasi, like for example, freelancer ka. Like ako, um, nag-freelance din ako. So, kailangan nila malaman na wala kang ITR. Okay, bakit wala kang ITR? Nagbabayad ka ba ng tax or what? First, pwede mo sabihin na, like, bago lang ikaw sa company mo. Like, I've only been here for a year, or less than a year, so I don't have my ITR yet, but... I have this much money um, in my bank because I was able to save up from blah, blah, blah. So, ganun. Kailangan mo rin i-justify sa kanila saan mo kukunin yung pera na gagamitin mo for travel. Siyempre, yun naman nila padala ka dun, tapos parang, huh, wala ka namang enough money, di ba? So, yun. Going to the next um, requirement, which is, kailangan maganda yung bank standing mo. So, 
Uh, I think it's like three to six months. So, paki-check na lang baka nag-update rin. Three to six months worth of bank statement. So, bank certificate is different. Kasi yung iba, di ba, biglang nangutang sila. Tapos lalaman na nila yung banko nila ng oh, 200,000. Biro mo, kunyari, 20,000 lang naman ng banko mo. Nangutang ka ng 60,000. Nangutang ka ng 200,000. Para lang may ipakita ka sa agency. That's red flag para sa kanila. Alam nila yung mga ganyan-ganyan galawan. So, kailangan... 6 months pa lang, or matagal, nagpe-prepare ka na, niluluto mo na yung um, papakita mong travel documents para sa, sa embassy or sa agency. Ay, para sa embassy, para alam mo na, alam nila na talagang, ay, talagang stable tong taong to, may pera talaga siya, hindi siya um, basta-basta magtatry magtrabaho dun. Kasi, di ba, wala siyang income, ganyan. So, kailangan mo rin sabihin yun na, okay, I got my money from this and that. So, in my case, wala akong ITR. So, sinabi ko, um, I was able to save up from blah, 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 but my husband is sponsoring my trip. Ngayon, if your trip is gonna be sponsored, kunyari, nakapangasawa ka, or, I mean, nakapangasawa ng mayaman, or, lilibre ka lang ng tita mo, or ng mami mo, kailangan may affidavit of support. May letter na notarized, uh, para formal document, notarized dapat yung letter na sinasabi na, oh, my mom will shoulder all my expenses, and then, nandito yung mga documents ng mami mo, kunyari na, May property siya, may coach siya, may business siya. So, kailangan din ng supporting documents nung tao na magsusupport ng trip mo. Now, most of the time, kung meron kang kapatid abroad, medyo red flag din sa kanila yun eh. Lalo na parang pag-dependent ka dun sa tao sa abroad to support you. Medyo maraming cases din na nade-deny sila. So, mas maganda yung, yung sponsor mo is from the same country, or you traveling together, tapos syempre you have a good relationship, ba? Bakit ka ba susponsoran? So in my case, minsan, like, my husband would sponsor me, kunyari, or which is true rin naman, he's gonna pay for everything, naka-indicate doon na, rest assured, my wife will not overstay, because so on and so forth. So, bibigyan mo sila talaga ng enough reason kung ba't kailangan mo bumalik. Now, if you're an employee, sabihin mo na, I have, work to do by the end of the month or I really have to be here because I have a business, I have projects lined up, something like that. Just parang masigurado lang nila na babalik ka talaga. And for me, syempre, um, well, um, going back to what I said, syempre kailangan maganda yung, um, bank, cert, yung bank standing mo, okay? So, bank statement mo, kailangan malinis. I'm not sure if they're gonna require bank certificate. I think okay lang din na wala, but always check with your agency, check with the embassy. Um, I provided both, bank statement and bank certificate, na kahit i-abandon ako nung sponsor ko doon sa Europe, meron pa rin akong enough money to survive. I don't know, there's like a certain period of time na kailangan mag-survive ka with the savings that you have. Uh, may certain amount siya na day na kailangan, ito yung pera mo, maglalas ba siya ng 45 days, mabubuhay ka ba doon kahit wala kang sponsor, something like that. So, it's just a guarantee for them. And then next is you have to have travel insurance. So in the event na may mangyari, ganyan you're insured. So yung agency nyo, I think can also provide for that. Magbabayad ka lang ng minimal amount. That this is required. So you have to get it anyways. You can ask the travel agency about it or meron mga nagbebenta noon, stuff like that. All right. So meron din naman, I mean nakita ko sa internet, nagpapahiram sila ng mga parang bookings, hotel bookings na worth gantong amount, parang you have to pay them 2-5 para gawa ka nila ng booking that you can show the embassy. But hindi ko yung ginawa kasi pwede ka naman mag-book sa mga online, sa, I mean, you can book online like Agoda, book, uh, booking.com, hotels.com na hindi mo pa siya babayaran. I mean, cancelable siya. Free cancellation, yun. So, kung pwede ka naman mag-cancel, i-book mo lang yun until pinaprocess mo pa yung visa mo. So, you can easily cancel that pagka nasabit mo na yung documents mo. Just to give um, the embassy assurance that you're gonna come back here in the Philippines. And then also, yung mga, kung dumaan ka naman sa agency, and also kung dawa ka naman sa agency, I think agencies can provide the bookings for you, yung round trip tickets, the agency can provide for that. So, yun yung mga importante yung kailangan mo malaman to get a visa sa Europe. And yun nga, just be confident and then wag masyadong overkill. And medyo red flag sa kanila talaga na may kamag-anak ka doon kasi yun yung mga may tendency mag-TNT. So, so far, just being OC about it na ako kasi marami akong backup na documents, 
mga syempre, picture mo, um, he, I mean, if you're gonna go through an agency, most of the time, chances are, lahat naman ng mga requirements mo, mabibigay nila. And, also, kailangan din, syempre, yung passport mo, importante, hindi pa siya mag expire di ba? Like, six months, um, from the start of your travel, kailan valid for sure for the next six months. So stuff like that. It's actually very simple. But if you're planning to travel soon, it's really um, for the best na you start saving up right now or you start parang having this good bank statement. Or if you're gonna borrow money from someone, make sure na six months prior, you're already preparing for that. Para hindi sila biglang, whoa, may pera kang ganito. How did you get that much money, right? And then, yun, just explain really well sa cover letter in your intention and uh, the reason why you want to travel. So, so far, VFS Global has been very convenient in processing talaga yung mga requirements namin. Wag rin kayong masyadong relax na last minute, di ba, Mag mag-plan. So, as for me and my husband, masyado siyang confident, nag-book na siya ng round-trip um, plane tickets namin. But like I said, your agency can hook you up with that or can help you out with the uh, the round trip um, plane tickets to to present to the embassy. So there, I hope na nakatulong naman tong video na to. This is just quick, but this one really worked for me. So remember, cover letter, affidavit of support, notarize it, and there. Just don't give the embassy any reason to doubt na um, you're really coming back here to the Philippines. Okay, so good luck to all of you applicants or mga mag apply for their European visa, for their Schengen visa. I wish you all the best. So if you learned something from this video, please hit like and subscribe.